SPS Faisal has addressed this, but let me just affirm that this is an area in which we want to provide the best possible support to those with special needs and it will continue to be an important part of our work. Ms. Chia Yong Yong spoke very passionately just now on this topic. And to Ms. Chia, I would like to say that she's definitely not a burden. In fact, she's very much a blessing. Her disability, or rather special ability, has enabled her to give this house insights and perspectives that we would not otherwise have had. And this has enriched our debate and informed our policy and enabled and her presence here has given us a much more positive contribution. So this is the value and the benefit of inclusivity and being able to draw on people of different talents and different abilities. We will continue to ensure that education remains an integrating force that brings everyone together. Now on the joy of learning. Many members spoke about this and the importance of giving students time and space to discover who they are. <clears throat> We've shared their concerns about the culture of overdrilling and overtesting. We agree, nurturing a love for learning in our students is equally important to us. We start early from the preschool years. Our nurturing early learners curriculum, as Mr. Lewis Ng pointed out, recognizes the importance of purposeful play. This framework is shared with the entire preschool sector. The Early Childhood Development Agency's regulations have also placed more emphasis on outdoor play and physical development. We've taken steps to unlock curiosity and encourage the joy of learning in our teaching pedagogies. So for example, our programs for active learning and learning through unstructured play where children can engage in free, open-ended and free play. In Pongo Primary, teachers set up stations full of supplies for children, nets, leaves, twigs to create their own rules and games. At Yangqing Primary, students learn English through performing and dramatizing stories together. Teachers also create games to teach math. We are facilitating sharing among educators on how to adopt innovative and engaging teaching practices so that students will enjoy learning through initiatives like Singapore Teaching Practice and Online Portal for Teachers. We acknowledge sentiments from the public, from the house, about how we can work to free our students from the never-ending worksheets and tests. So for example, Keming Primary School is exploring moving away from common tests, which used to take up about three weeks of curriculum time, to regular checkpoint assessments instead, so that more time is freed up for other learning experiences. MOE's Director General of Education, Mr. Wong Siu Hong, recently sent a note round to the fraternity. In it, he affirmed the good work of teachers, and he also encouraged everyone to adopt a spirit of introspection, to reflect on whether some of our practices, despite being done out of love for the child, may have unintended consequences. For example, by giving them too many tests, which may deprive them of time for other activities. So we will do our part, but we do need the parents and other stakeholders to do their part too. Mr. Lewisan called for a review of the performance-based ranking for teachers because he was concerned that they might teach for the test. I would like to assure, reassure Mr. Ng and members that actually teacher performance is assessed holistically and is not dependent on their students' academic performance. So the teachers are assessed on a wide range of criteria, quality teaching and learning, character development of students, professional development of self and others, and a demonstrated uh, desire and whether they demonstrate desired personal attributes, professional values, ethics, content mastery, and pedagogy of instruction. Next, bridging gaps. Members have expressed concerns about students who are less well-off and disadvantaged. We pay a lot of attention to this group with interventions and financial assistance. And this has enabled students from disadvantaged backgrounds to do better. Today, nine out of 10 students in the lowest SES quintile progress to post-secondary education, up from five in 10 or 50% 15 years ago, 10 years ago. We top the world PISA scores in mathematics, 
science reading, and collaborative problem solving. We also top the world in TIMS, the trends in international mathematics and science study in maths and science. We're number two in the world in PEARLS, the progress and international reading literary, literacy study. What this shows us is this. There are high peaks. We have one of the highest proportion of students performing at the highest levels of proficiency, about one third to half of our students. Mr. Madhav Mohan asked if this means that our Singapore students are ready for the brave new world. The fact that our students come out tops in collaborative problem solving is promising because it measures not just their content knowledge, but their ability to work with others, to communicate and to solve complex problems. And this will serve us in good stead for the future. However, what is also notable about these results is that there are no deep valleys, meaning that we have one of the smallest proportions of low performers in PISA, TIMS, and PEARLS. What this means is that our schools are supporting students from all socioeconomic backgrounds to do well, and that they do better than their peers in other countries. Nevertheless, like members who have spoken today, we too are concerned about the widening income gap, even as the middle class are uplifted and do better over time. So the solution is to uplift those at the lower end and close the gap without chopping the top and holding back those who do well, as Minister Ong spoke about just now. This is something we are committed to do. I also want to say that what drives much of our work to support and uplift students are our committed educators who are the heart of the system. It is our educators who motivate students and who identify opportunities for them. For example, Outram Secondary School has a remarkable principal, Mr. Bu Hyun Kok. He formed a task force consisting of teachers and student welfare officers to address long-term absentee cases, the children who didn't turn up for school. For those teachers, their calendar is cleared for the first few periods in the morning. If the students don't turn up by 8 a.m., these teachers will make phone calls, they will visit the homes, they will knock on the doors, and they encourage the families to send them to school. The task force makes a special effort to understand and empathize with the family's difficulties. They build rapport so that the family trusts that the school has the child's welfare at heart. And this has helped many students like Jimmy, not his real name, feel welcome and safe. He used to skip school because his stepmother had a chronic, has a chronic illness and he had to buy her meals. With the school's help, he now stays with his grandparents who are better able to care for him. He loves soccer, so the school placed him in a special soccer program to encourage him to come back and his attendance is now regular. In the three years since the task force was set up, Outram Secondary has managed to reduce their long-term absenteeism rate by half. Finally, let me say something about partnership. At the end of the day, you can see that all of us, parents, teachers, MOE, we all want the same thing. We want our children and our people to do well. We want them to have and enjoyable an education as possible, and we want them to enjoy learning. The key is in striking the right balance and having the right mindset.